As you can tell by everything around me, it is fall, so that means it's time for another EDC update. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. The seasons have finally changed again, which means it's time for another EDC update. Now if I think back to my summer update, there have definitely been quite a few changes, some that I sort of like foreshadowed in the previous video. If you want to check that stuff out, I'll leave a link for it right up here. I did make some pretty big changes and I've made videos on some of the things that I've changed over the past couple of weeks and months. But you guys know that's how this goes, so let me show you what I have in my pockets for fall of 2019. The first thing on that list is something that people tend to care about a lot, and then other people just don't give a shit entirely. So, this is something that is super important to me, however I have not made a video on this switch. I did mention making the change in my previous update video, and that is to my phone. Currently in my pocket right now is the iPhone. 10s max or the xs max now the reason i haven't made a video on this phone and i haven't really like mentioned the switch or anything i know it's interesting to some people but i didn't want to make a video on it because i'm not like in love with the phone i'm going to kind of contradict myself as i explain this because phones are important to me but at the same time it's just a phone so i really don't care that much I still care enough that there are a ton of things that make me hate the iPhone, but this is what I have now, and this is what I'm gonna be using for the foreseeable future, I guess. So like I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to have two phones, and I still have my old Google Pixel phone, but I wanted to upgrade, or upgrade, to an iPhone because I thought it might improve my workflow. I edit all of my videos on a MacBook Pro. I also edit a lot of my photos on an iPad Pro. So I figured maybe if I got an iPhone, it would make things a little bit easier. I could use AirDrop and I would have all of my files in my Adobe programs on my phone because they're on my iPad and they're also on my computer. I thought it would kind of speed things up and just make my life a little bit easier but honestly, it really hasn't. Yes, the workflow is a little bit easier because AirDrop is nice for like really big files when it wants to work. A lot of the times, AirDrop sucks. It doesn't recognize different devices and things like that. I don't wanna to get too into this, but I guess one of the reasons why I didn't make a big deal about switching to an iPhone is because I don't want to make a video on something that I really don't like. The camera on this thing is not that great. The iPhone 11 looks like they kind of improved that a little bit, but the image processing that Google provides in their Pixel phones is far superior and you're not gonna be able to change my mind on that. The form factor of the phone is great and all, but these things are noticeably heavy and not many people talk about this. One of the first things I noticed about the XS Max is how heavy it is and whenever I tell people about this, I'm like, here, hold this in your hand next to a Google Pixel and it is significantly heavier. Now, some people aren't really gonna care about that, but when it's something that's in your pocket and you're constantly like holding it in your hand all day, it adds up and it's honestly annoying. Siri on iOS is awful. It is hands down the worst virtual assistant ever. It's terrible. They finally added swipe texting on here, which is nice. They also added the new like dark mode on the new iOS, so I do like some of that stuff. The screen is nice. The notch doesn't really bother me all that much. The phone works pretty well because most app developers are developing for the iPhone before they're doing anything for the Android operating system. That being said though, there are still a ton of bugs with some of my favorite apps and it's just like typical annoying cell phone stuff. It's annoying that they're using a lightning cable when pretty much everything else is using USB-C now. My iPad actually uses a USB-C port. All of the new Mac computers are using USB-C and they're still using lightning cables on these things. Not having front-facing speakers is annoying. iMessage is pretty good. That is one thing that I actually like on the iPhone. I can kind of transfer from my phone to my computer. And the list kind of goes on and on. If you guys actually want to see a video on this, you can let me know. But like I said, I don't like making videos on things that I'm just going to rip apart. So the phone is a phone. It is what it is. I'll leave a link for the matte screen protector and the pop sockets. I can't really sell those anymore, but the case and the phone and everything, all that stuff can be found in the description down below. That's enough ranting about cell phones for now. I'm gonna set that off to the side, and one other thing that is actually nice about the iPhone, one of the things that I actually really like about that is the Apple Watch. If you look back through some of my EDC updates, I have a watch on like maybe 20, 25% of the time. I'm really not a big watch guy. 
but since I got the phone and I got the watch, I actually use this thing a lot. I like having the weather updates and the time and everything right there on my wrist. It kind of keeps me more productive because I'm not constantly checking my phone, especially like when I'm filming right now, my phone is going off and people are texting me and I can simply look at my watch rather than pick up my phone and feel obligated to respond. The activity tracker is nice because when I'm sitting at my computer editing, I kind of get lost with time. So every, I think it's hour, every 50th minute of the hour, if I've been sitting there not doing anything, the watch will be like, hey man, stand up, you're being a bum. And although I'm not like super active and I'm not exercising all the time and things like that, which is why people like the activity rings and everything, I like it just to kind of keep my mind active and kind of be aware of what I'm doing throughout the day. So that is a 44 millimeter series four, something like that, 42, I don't know. It's an Apple watch, whatever. All right, with all the nerd stuff out of the way, let's move on to my wallet. This I did update you guys on in a video when I switched over from my Trayvax Contour to this element. Now there's not a whole lot to say about this. I love Trayvax products. I love the leather that they use and the metal and they just make a really solid product. I can't recommend them enough. This holds all of my typical cards. I of course do have my Trayvax shift, the little beard comb in the front there. I actually use that thing pretty much every single day. But since I switched back to an element, I just wanted to kind of try it out and see how this gray leather would wear. It's looking awesome if I do say so myself. But after switching back to this wallet, I realized that I think my favorite Trayvax wallet of all time is the Contour. It's just a little bit smaller in every single dimension when it comes to the actual shape of the wallet. And I think I can access my money and cards a little bit easier on the Contour. I think the bottle opener is much easier to use on the Contour as well. So chances are I will probably go from the Element back to the good old Contour in the next couple of weeks or so. Now speaking of Trayvax, I am still using all of the same Trayvax products like the belt. I know I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit here, but since we're on the topic of Trayvax products, this is another one that I always, always go back to. So since my last update, I did test out a Core Essentials belt, and like I mentioned in that video, it's really just not a belt for me. I appendix carry pretty much all the time and this thing is just perfect in every way for me. It has the right amount of flex and movement. It's not like super solid like a traditional gun belt would be I guess. It's more similar to like a leather belt but it's still rigid enough that it kind of moves with my body. It's super comfortable, really easy to put on and take off and if you ever want to get something like a custom buckle. I did a limited run of those a little while ago. You can swap out the buckles, which is very slim and contoured to your body. It's just like the perfect bare minimum belt. I love this thing and I always go back to it. I get comments on old videos of a review of this belt all the time that people pick these things up and they love them just as much as I do. And I test out a lot of different belts. There's just something about the simplicity of a little piece of nylon and a high crafted CNC sort of clip. Not even a clip, I guess it's just like a belt buckle. I'm gonna put this back on now because this is holding up everything else that's in my pockets and then we'll move on. All right, now let's move on to the pocket knife. A little while ago, I did a video with a friend of mine, Pete, and in that video we were talking about like the ideal everyday carry knife, one that you just have with you all the time, it's your go-to knife and you do everything with it. And he, at the time, was saying that he was going to carry a specific knife for an entire year. I'm saying that in the past sense because that is what he had said and I was talking with him last night and things are kind of changing now. So I'll have to do a follow up video to that but at the same time when I was filming up there in Canada with him, he was trying to get me on the same page like, yo, carry one knife for an entire year, you can do it. But my mind doesn't really work like that. Like, I understand the concept of it and it makes a lot of sense but when I look at my collection of knives, there are just so many awesome blades and I like get bored with carrying the same one all the time. So since I got back to the States after that trip, I decided that I was going to try and like play along. I picked one knife out of my collection and I've been carrying this thing for the past three months or so, however long it's been. Now I've been doing great with this. I have not carried any other knife and the temptation sort of sneaks up every once in a while. Because this is the only knife that I've been using for the past three months or so, I've done some gnarly stuff with it. So this is my Para 3. I have done a full dedicated video on the Spyderco Para 3 and it's a great knife. I love it and that is why I chose to stick with this one for an entire year. Although I think things are gonna kind of change after this video. 
So it's got the CPM S30V blade. I love the full flat grind. I also love that it's all black everything. I do have a black deep carry clip from Casey Lynch. He makes awesome clips for a bunch of different knives, so I would definitely recommend checking that out. The stock clip on a lot of Spyderco knives leave a ton of the knife hanging out of the top of the pocket, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it's really easy to lose a knife that way. I think every pocket knife should come with a deep carry clip, so he's sort of filling the void there. The centering on this thing is perfect. G10 handles, you can spidey flick it really easily. You can actually see how loose this thing is. It just kind of falls back closed with that compression lock. The jimping is great, it feels good in my hand, and this is like almost the perfect knife for me. Now of course I've been doing just regular everyday carry tasks with this knife. I did put a Wicked Edge on it, I do have a Wicked Edge sharpener. I have the Gen 3 Pro so you can get some crazy edges on this. It could use a little bit of a sharpening right now, there's still a little bit of a mirror polish that you can see. Eh, it's not hair popping sharp so I could definitely put a little bit better of an edge on there but I haven't sharpened this thing for the past like month and a half now. So I've been doing regular EDC tasks with this knife, however a couple months back I was camping with the van up in the woods and for some reason I had thought that I forgot my camping knife which is typically an SE6. Turns out I had it in the van the whole time, I just put it in a box and forgot about it but at the time I didn't think that I had anything other than the knife that was in my pocket which at the time was this and is still this today. So I actually use this knife to make kindling for a fire. I batoned a pair of three through a bunch of wood which is why you can see that the finish is kind of all scratched up but for the abuse that I put this through, it still looks pretty good. The centering, I did not change at all, and it's still perfectly centered. Granted, I wasn't like really trying to stress test this thing and just like beat the shit out of it, but this thing worked for my needs at the time and it got me by in that pinch. Now I could go on and on about this knife and I still think that this is one of the best everyday carry blade options out there. But like I said, I have a lot of cool knives in my collection and whenever I open that box up, I'm like, ooh, maybe that would be good in my pocket today. I don't know, something about the fidget factor, I guess, of some other knives. There's just so many awesome blades to pick from. That's enough on the pocket knife. Now let's move on to my keys. So this is actually where something has changed a little bit. Still rocking the Trayvax Link. Quick detach lanyard, and this is still my original one from like two and a half, maybe three years ago now, I don't know. This is the original link right here, and I still have the new ones. I have a leather one, and I have the other nylon ones, but I don't need to switch it out because these are products that last. Still have my typical keys. This is the set of keys for my Subaru. Still rocking the Gerber Shard. I've had this thing for a long, long time. It's beat up, and I use this thing all the time, literally every single day, to open packages and to screw things in and to pry. Love this thing. You'll also notice in this video that I'm not carrying a dedicated pocket flashlight anymore. I guess my needs just aren't really there for that right now because this little O-Light keychain light does everything that I need. This is the same light that's on all of my keychains. I show these to everyone. I've given a bunch to my friends. You simply twist it on, five lumens, and then it's like 130 lumens, something like that. Rechargeable, this one actually has my name inscribed in the side. And I put this on a little quick detach thing, which is kind of nice, but I actually don't take it off of my keys. So everything on my keys is the same from the lanyard to the Olight i1R EOS, the Gerber Shard, but I did add something new, and this is a new product that is going to be releasing, I guess right now, as this video is live, you can pick one of these things up. So this right here is a Victorinox Classic. I actually used to carry these things like a long time ago back in college. If you ever found my old Instagram, it was talon underscore EDC. I used to post a ton of like EDC pictures and hand dumps and stuff like that of things that I used to carry back in college before I ever started YouTube. So on that Instagram account, I have deleted all of the old photos and I've been putting some new stuff over there now, but I used to carry one of these on my keys just like this all the time. So I had a few different classics and then I also had another one, I think it was called like the Midnight Warrior or something like that. It was basically the same form factor but a little bit thicker, had a pen in it and a little light. So anyway, that's besides the point. My friends at Blade HQ hit me up and they are like, yo, do you wanna do a custom run of some Victor Knox classics? And I was like, hell yeah. So I sent them my logo and like thoughts on designs and stuff like that and this is what they came up with. It's gonna be a little bit hard to tell in video but on one side we have the Blade HQ logo and the little Victor Knox logo and then if you turn it around, I don't know if this is like cool or funny or both, 
But there you have the TS logo and then my cartoonized face on here. So they basically took like my avatar and my headshot here on YouTube, cartoonized it and then put it on this blade. It came out awesome. Like I mentioned, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see on video, but on the top portions of the knife, like where you clip it to a lanyard here, there are like little serration looking things. And then behind me and the Blade HQ logo, there's sort of some like black multicam on there. The design turned out awesome and there are only a few of these, I think maybe like 200 or so. So if you wanna pick up one of these, I would recommend going to the description now, sooner than later, and placing an order for one of these. They're not gonna be around long and they do help support the channel, so if you do pick one of these up, I appreciate it. If you don't know anything about the classic Swiss Army knife, I'll show you here real quick, but I think I'm gonna do like a dedicated video on this, maybe tomorrow. So on the one side here, you have a little pair of scissors. These are surprisingly extremely sharp and they can cut you, so just be careful with those. You have a tiny little pen blade over here, also very sharp. This one is sort of like a screwdriver, but also a file on this side here, so you can use that for whatever you see fit. And then probably my favorite thing and most useful on this side, the Blade HQ logo side, there is a little set of tweezers that pop out. Those are very easy to lose, so be careful with that. And then also under my face here is a toothpick. So I never would have thought I would see the day with my face on a classic pocket knife like that, but it's pretty cool. Again, I still don't know if it's like cool or funny. I think it's more funny than anything, but yeah, it's pretty rad. All right, so those are my keys. And the last and final thing that YouTube doesn't like me talking about is that I carry a G-U-N every day because I can. It's America and it's my right. So um, I'll show you, just don't tell YouTube. All right, so right up here in the front of my waistband, appendix carry, I'm still carrying the same one as before. This is a Glock 19. It's in a QVO, more discreet holster because you gotta be pretty discreet about it. This thing is loaded right now too, but shh, don't tell anyone. Inside of this are Federal 124 grain hollow points. Very good ballistics on these. Everything on this is the same as the video that I made on it. I will link the second channel up there if you wanna check out the dedicated video on this GUN. Ameriglow sights, Trigicon, RMR, RM06, so it's a one MOA dot, Inforce APLC. I've had great luck with this so far, a couple hundred rounds through it and the thing is still great. Just gotta clean up the lens every once in a while. The only thing that I've actually changed since the previous videos that I've made of carrying this thing is that I took off the back strap. I kind of go back and forth with this thing. I do like the beaver tail on some bigger guns like the 17, but I decided that it added just a little bit extra that I was kind of tired of carrying around. So I took that off and now I'm just running it without any back strap or beaver tail on there. So this thing is great. I love it. And it's uh, going to be run through a couple different courses coming up here soon. Gonna make this thing hot again. All right, and hopefully the YouTube demonetizers have skipped that part of the video. So that's it, that's all for this fall EDC update. Quite a few things have changed now that I lay everything out here in front of me and look at it. Chances are a lot of this stuff is gonna change again in the winter time. I would like to switch my phone again, but these are so expensive. I paid like $1,000 for this phone and it sucks because it's a necessity for what I do, but yeah, not stoked on that. Might change out the wallet, might change out the knife. The belt and holster and the thing in the holster is gonna remain the same. And then my keys, that's probably not gonna change either because it just hasn't in a long time. So that's all. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Like I mentioned, I will try to link a lot of these things in the description if you wanna pick something up for yourself. Like I mentioned, the Victor Knox Classic, a Blade HQ exclusive collaboration with me. Those are live now, get them before they sell out. And then I'll also leave some discount codes for anything else that I carry on me every day, like Trayvax and yeah. That's it. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. That's gonna be all for today. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.